It is my delight and great pleasure to host Dr. Victor Chong, one of the well-known MS neurologists in Asia Oceania region. Victor, very good evening to you and thank you very much for accommodating World Federation Neurology, World Brain Day team and YouTube channel for this interview despite your busy schedule. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tisa. Thank you very much for the honor of uh, getting me to uh, speak on this. Uh, uh, yes, Victor, is let's uh, start a uh, few personal questions uh, to begin with. Uh, tell us uh, uh, your background. Uh, the What made you to be interested in medicine, uh, neurology, and then neuroimmunology? Take us through the journey from your high school days uh, uh, to where you are now. Yes, well, I was always interested in computer, and I guess uh, the most sophisticated computer that we have in the world is a human brain. And, uh, and that's where my interest started. Uh, when I went to med school uh, here, you know, um, um, in this city in Melbourne, you know, I was always interested in neurology. I think it's challenging. Uh, and I did my uh, student day uh, elective in neurology. Um, so uh, it's, uh, to me, you know, uh, it's, um, uh, it, it's a challenging, it's a very interesting, it's a very broad topic and very broad subject. And, uh, and, and uh, during my overseas uh, training day, uh, I was involved uh, in an encephalitis outbreak. Uh, and that started my interest uh, in neuroinflammatory conditions, infections, and uh, immunology, uh, including conditions like you know, multiple sclerosis and NMO. Uh, and uh, my head of department at the time did his uh, MD uh, in multiple sclerosis. And so naturally, uh, he became my mentor, uh, and I benefited a lot uh, from, his, uh, from his guidance. Uh, so yes, that's uh, that's how I got interested uh, in uh, multiple sclerosis uh, in neuroimmunology. I remember vividly in the past, uh, the, you mentioned multiple times uh, that uh, out of uh, pure luck uh, and uh, opportunity, you got to the, the get your hands dirty uh, the, the, during that encephalitis uh, uh, epidemic. Uh, I remember you mentioning this uh, more than one occasion. Uh, on corridor discuss discussions in the past uh, with uh, uh, the heartfelt gratitude to some of your mentors. Uh, given that uh, we live uh, in this uh, uh, calamity or pandemic of uh, COVID-19, uh, which really uh, the threatening uh, to the basically change uh, the way that uh, we live anywhere in the world, uh, I think your story would uh, give a ray of hope uh, for youngsters as well as neurologists uh, uh, who both of you, both of us, uh, know very well, uh, is suffering a lot uh, in Asia, Asia, the Asia Pacific region in particular. So, uh, tell us uh, how you and your colleagues at that time converted uh, uh, some sort of a difficult situation to a winning formula. Well, I mean, I, I think the, um, the 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 most, I mean, I guess you know, under those sort of situation, everyone is under pressure, everyone is under stress. Um, but I feel that a keen interest on the topic, uh, a keen interest in learning about the condition uh, and the, you know, and the ability to, to spend time to gather information, to put things together, that, that's, that's how I think we can benefit the most uh, out of an outbreak like this. We can, you know, with any new disease, with any new outbreak, you know, at the start, there isn't a lot that people know. But as a, as a condition progresses, as we're able to gather more information, to be able to describe the condition, to understand more about the condition, that helps us, uh, you know, not just to treat our patients better, but help us to deal, you know, with the, you know, with the next outbreak, with the next problem as well. Uh, so yes, so uh, so we were very fortunate to, to be able to gather uh, some data on the outbreak and and manage to publish a few paper. Yes. So the the, the let us hope that uh, our colleagues, including ourselves, uh, would make this uh, difficult situation to a winning formula and hopefully protect humanity and human health uh, uh, as uh, this is a global pandemic. Uh, personally, I don't believe this is a national issue. This is a global problem. We are all very much interconnected with each other now compared to 100, uh, 150, 200 years ago. Victor, uh, the you, you are aware that uh, the World Federation Neurology uh, is uh, dedicating the the year-long World Brain Day campaign this year with the ambitious uh, theme of stop multiple sclerosis. Uh, you would agree with me that uh, the 
compared to our medical student days, uh, now we practice uh, neurology with a whole lot of therapeutic armamentarium. Uh, would it be fair to say that uh, if you look at the therapeutic advances in neurology, multiple sclerosis is indeed the queen uh, of uh, therapeutic advances. Uh, if I were to say that uh, you could almost uh, cure multiple sclerosis with very, very powerful armamentarium of therapeutics that we have, would that be a fair comment? Can you elaborate uh, on that? Yes, look, I'm, I'm, just, I'm very, very excited that, you know, the, uh, the World Federation of Neurology is dedicating, uh, you know, this period of time to promote multiple sclerosis. That's very close to my heart. Yes, and, and I do agree with you. Uh, you know, since I was a student and since we were students, uh, we only had one or two, uh, you know, sort of, you know, uh, effective therapy, but now we have more than a dozen. And, and you're absolutely right. We are, we are heading close to be able to control the disease to a great extent, to a great degree. And most patients, you know, most patients are as good as cured, uh, uh, you know, with the therapies that we have. So it, it is encouraging, uh, yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited about this opportunity. Uh, Victor, my other question is, I know that uh, you were part of the gang when uh, the PACTRIMS uh, or the Pan-Asian Committee for Treatment and Research uh, uh, in Multiple Sclerosis was setting up. Uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you were one of the general secretaries uh, during the formative years of uh, PACTRIMS uh, for a number of years uh, when you were living in KL Malaysia. Share your thoughts about uh, the early days of PACTRIMS uh, and uh, uh, what sort of uh, uh, the, 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 the useful activities that PACTRIMS uh, had been doing in the early years uh, and, and now? Yes, look, I was very fortunate to, to know people like, you know, um, Dr. Carroll, for example. Uh, um, yes, and, uh, and we got involved uh, and, uh, and, and started PACTRIMS and, and that was exciting time, that was exciting years. Uh, back in those days, uh, in part of Asia, we 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 have well, we still have multiple sclerosis today, but a significant proportion of patients have uh, at that time what we call Asian MS or what we today know as neuromyelitis optica. Uh, back in those days, not very much known is known of the condition. We didn't have very effective therapeutics, and there was a lot of confusion as to what is NMO and what is MS. And 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 those were the years that uh, there were fruitful years. A lot has been uh, dissected, a lot has been published, a lot has been made known of what, you know, uh, the details of NMO and MS. And, and from that, the therapeutics, the treatment, the tests come uh, that, uh, that we have today uh, that, that helps us uh, to, to manage the condition much better today. So do you think uh, the neurologist practice uh, in Asia the, should be concentrating more on neuromyelitis myelitis optica or NMO spectrum disorder? Uh, as a different entity to MS, uh, or they should still be interested in MS and NMO as a group of neuroinflammatory disorders and continue to work uh, improving therapeutics. Uh, any any advice for our Asian colleagues? Yes, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, they need to know NMO well, and NMO and MS are separate of different diseases. But having said that, in a lot of countries, you know, the proportion of MS is still significant. Uh, there is still a significant number of patients uh, who suffer from multiple sclerosis. Yes, you know, working in those parts of, parts of the world, we will need to be good in managing both multiple sclerosis uh, and NMO. Absolutely, yeah. And who knows uh, what the post-COVID-19 issues are going to be. I think there is a whole world of unknown, uh, basically, the, watching us, uh, how we unentangle those mysteries. Uh, I think uh, the... This is uh, probably going to be a critically important time uh, for those of us who are interested in brain health uh, to be really interested in neuroinflammation uh, broadly, including MS and uh, NMO. And uh, the, the, I, I personally think that uh, the WFN uh, or World Federation Neurology concentrating on MS uh, is a timely reminder that inflammation is critically important in any neurological disorder for that matter, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, I certainly agree with you, Tisa, very much so, yes. Victor, the, my other question is, I know that you practice neurology in a, uh, uh, in a sort of a region in Melbourne, which is quite unique. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You basically cater for patients representing well over 150 countries. You are basically a neurologist for United Nations. 
and uh, the the that also poses uh, significant challenges uh, uh, in other words you get to see more broader uh, the the neurological disorder consortium rather than uh, the being exclusively be able to practice uh, multiple sclerosis uh, and i also believe that the area that you serve is uh, significantly underfunded uh, and uh, less supported uh, compared to some of the affluent uh, suburbs or regions uh, in 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 australia uh, how do you cope with uh, those uh, unique challenges and still uh, try and bring the best uh, for your patients uh, with the available therapeutic armamentarium yes yes hello actually <clears throat> Yes, I uh, um, find, find it very challenging. I work in, at the edges of town, on both sides of towns. Uh, so, and yes, we do see, uh, you know, uncommon disorder, including things like regional tetanus, for example. I, I mean, I think one of the fortunate thing is that uh, a lot of the medications uh, that we use are funded by uh, by a, a government uh, Medicare scheme. So that takes away a lot of uh, a lot of funding issues. But yes, certainly the patients keep me on my toe. Uh, I you know, I have to constantly read up and, and stay up to date, uh, you know, even with esoteric conditions, <clears throat> conditions that we don't see, you know, uh, very often elsewhere in town. Yes, and, and that certainly inspires an interest uh, to, the, uh, to the general neurology practice uh, uh, that I enjoy very much. I, th I think both these regions uh, can have uh, additional exclusive medical schools to train the necessary doctor doctors uh, that these uh, the growing regions need, uh, which is basically probably a reflection of rest of the other parts of the world also, isn't it? My, my last uh, question to you is, uh, what is your message to young medical students uh, and those physician trainees uh, who may or may not be contemplating a career on neurology? Why do you think that they should be seriously considering a career in neurology and brain-related things, uh, neuroimmunology in particular? Well, the first thing I want to say is that neurology is always exciting, always interesting. You know, there is so much to learn, so much to know, and it keeps you, you know, it just keeps your interest and your, and, and your love for neurology burning for a long time. You know, you won't get sick and tired of the topic uh, number one, number two, it is challenging. Uh, it, that, that's what made life interesting. Um, and number three, we are living in exciting times. And you mentioned about multiple sclerosis treatment, Tisa, and it's absolutely a very good example of how, how the world of multiple sclerosis has advanced you know, dramatically over the last 10, 20 years. And we, we are going to see the same changes in the next 10, 20 years or so. So it is a very exciting time, a very interesting time to join neurology. And I certainly agree. Uh, I certainly would encourage you know, a lot of young students and young residents to contemplate a career in neurology. Your life will be very interesting for a long time to come. Victor, thank you very much for your time. And uh, the, uh, again, uh, I invite uh, you and your colleagues, uh, including your patients, to visit uh, World Federation Neurology website, uh, visit the World Brain Day page. Uh, with the, the committee, uh, with the help of a lot of others, have created a nice collection of toolbox uh, they are basically free to download. They can be used uh, in your office. Uh, they can be used uh, to post in Facebook, Twitter, any other social media channels. Uh, and this year, we are also quite ambitious to collect patient video clips. Uh, so we would love to hear from our patients uh, so they could basically get their smartphone out uh, or if they prefer to do it uh, with a PC or camera, uh, whatever that is easier for them. All what we want uh, is to hear their story whether it is positive or negative, preferably under 60 seconds or 90 seconds to share their story with us. Uh, our ambitious aim is to collect uh, 1,000 stories uh, worldwide uh, of uh, MS. I know that most of your patients are doing very well uh, and uh, they almost live a normal life. Uh, and I think that story needs to be told. Uh, they can use any language uh, and uh, the, 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 the email address is there on our web page it's wbd 2021 at wfneurology.org again uh, my sincere gratitude to giving us time today and we wish you all the very best and all the success in your academic and clinical career thank you victor thank you tisa thank you for having me